So applause, people are sitting down, nice. Um, hey everyone, always tough after the break, especially last day, a lot of suitcases, appreciate the attention. Um, this, uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to help out with, with several of the WTFs uh, uh, here in the U.S., and, and, and this is definitely going to be less of a primer. Uh, I'm guessing a good 80 to 90 percent of the room kind of is in the weeds on this already, sort of gets it. We will do a couple of quick minutes for the 10 to 20 percent where it's still maybe new and uh, don't want to ask, uh, what, what, what are we talking about again? Um, and then we'll move into a couple of quick uh, issues and some maybe some unique perspectives about it, and then hopefully that'll kick off uh, a good chat with, uh, with uh, Pete and Ricardo. So. Um, we, uh, we're fortunate at Prask Consulting. We represent about 45 clients now. About 25 of them are publishers. And so we're lucky in that we're agnostic and that we also work with agencies and trading desks and brands and ad tech companies as well. But for most of this, uh, we're going to represent the pain of the publisher. Um, and you saw a little of it um, actually in a, in a well-timed uh, uh, blast that went out in Digiday's email that everybody, of course, I'm sure read the newsletter before you started today and the interwebs went down. Um, it was the same Zaxxas sponsored video that you saw uh, from very smart people like Pete and, uh, and Brian and uh, Jen. So um, publishers are, are feeling a little bit of pain. We've got a couple examples here. Uh, this is uh, a visual from Mad Men that, we th uh, that seems to be the attitude a lot of publishers are talking to us about in terms of feeling like things are changing and happening to them and things are being taken away from them. If you haven't seen the series, uh, this is when uh, the agency gets a computer and the creative department is a little pissed um, because they lose their room where they do their creative thing, uh, drink and smoke pot, but also, holy cow, the machines are taking over and we feel like there's a little lack of control. Um, some publishers are coming to us lamenting like this. Uh, this is the great Nicolas Cage from Raising Arizona about 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Fantastic movie when he's getting his butt kicked by Randall Tex Cobb in one of the final scenes there, trying to crawl away and being dragged back in to another scenario. So why is that? Um, here's the part for the 10% of the uninitiated. Um, the definition is here. You can just go to MediaRatingCouncil.org or ping me after, happy to send you these slides. Um, Cheryl Maine, the queen of, uh, of, of viewability and rallying a lot of folks together from the, IR, from, the, uh, from the IAB, talks about an opportunity to see. And you've seen a couple of definitions. Here it is for display, 50% in view for one second. In video, 50% for two continuous seconds. Um, so there are some definitions there. Um, intentionally too much text here, but wanted to copy paste from uh, some quotes that, uh, that Randall Rothenberg of the IAB uh, expressed just a little while ago, talking about how certainly there's still more work to be done here. There's a minimum standard, but we'll talk about how some agency groups have been trying to be a little more aggressive and trying to push for a higher standard in their negotiations. Uh, a couple of key points here from Randall talking about uh, recognizing that uh, you know, uh, there would be some issues and, and, hey, the industry should have maybe had a little more heads up on this. And then uh, un understood that uh, publishers would have some concerns. There are 15 different companies, uh, you heard it earlier in the, uh, in the video piece, that uh, are accredited by the MRC. They don't all have the same reporting standards. So you'll have a publisher uh, pay for one uh, ad tech company providing viewability and giving them, hey, we're at 72 percent. And the buyer would, on the other side, have their own uh, metrics, methodology, and ad tech partners saying, actually, you're at 51. You guys stink. We're going to optimize away from you, or we're going to need some kind of credit. That, that's not fun tension. Um, it's sort of a second version of early days. How many of you remember uh, back in the late 90s when we were all bitching about third-party ad server discrepancies? And publishers would say, yeah, it's good times, wasn't it? Yeah. I was on the IV's project reinvention with David Cohen and, and Jeremy Fain, who's now at Rubicon, and Zach uh, Rogers, who's been at CNET forever. Um, and we were debating how to change the T and C, T's and C's. And oh, gosh, all right, if it's under 10%, then fine. A buyer wins. That's cool. Otherwise, you know, we're going to split or whatever. So it, not fun conversations to have, especially for the first time. Um, here's a, a key reminder and a formula. Uh, there was a viewability uh, event in New York uh, that some folks put on um, for, uh, for, around, uh, for about four hours. And I heard from three different people afterwards that there are still people confusing viewability and fraud. Uh, please re-listen to what Angie Ng has said over the last three months, or please recognize there is a massive difference. Hopefully, everyone has, has take, gotten a takeaway from that. One is very, very deceptive and illegal and terrible. The other is someone didn't scroll down. That's a very big difference. Uh, you know, publishers are really, really doing their best here. They're not trying to, mani to, uh, to manipulate the system. Um, 
As we talked about, there are a couple of folks that are uh, looking to maybe be a little more aggressive. I moderated a panel back in May, right when the, the MRC standards first came out, and we had uh, the great Julian from Starcom, we had the great Rob from Viacom, and there was a fun debate around what price should be paid going forward uh, around viewable impressions. Julian had the audacity, uh, he's a buyer and a, and a good one, and leading a pretty big team with some solid clients and budgets, to suggest that he should be paying the same price as he has before, but just throw out all the non-viewable stuff. And Rob would kind of argue, Rob coming from TV like I did from, from a, a billion decades ago, said, well, you know, we've kind of bundled this inventory together, and yeah, um, you've been paying one price assuming that there's going to be some non-viewable in there. So if we remove all the non-viewable, then that price actually should probably go up, right? Um, and so we think more and more buyers are at least recognizing that. Again, fair for buyers to be asking. Uh, it is a buyer's market and has been in programmatic for a good six years and running. But maybe uh, there can be some, some fair uh, value equation there. And then as we know, um, it, I was going to try to look before. Is Joe Cowan still in the room? I saw him here on, on Monday. And I love Joe, uh, part of uh, running MEC and, and part of Group M, kind of the, the poster children right now in terms of those who have been a little more aggressive in the market, trying to move the standard forward and saying the MRC is a nice floor, but probably you know we'd actually like it to be much higher and up here. And a lot of publishers understanding a little bit back on their heels, a little bit scrambling. Um, fair again for them to ask and say, you know, we really only want to pay for folks that an actual human has seen, or at least had the opportunity to see. Here's our analogy of the day. Um, you know, I, anybody like cashews? I've, I've liked cashews a long time. They're the best part of the mixed nuts, right? So, you know, when you pay for the cashews, that's like, you know, especially in the, in the gorgeous hotel here, you know, it's, it's $14 for, for an ounce, right? Um, it's like crack, I've heard, so um, in terms of pricing. But on the right, you know, you've got your cashews mixed in there, but everybody hates the Brazilian nuts, right? And nobody wants the Brazilian nuts, but you know, they're still okay. They still have some value. Think of the non-viewable impressions as a Brazilian nut, and especially because, you know, we heard earlier in the video from Brian, with, with all due respect, talking about how their model is built on actually humans seeing the ads. Actually, even though there's an ad viewable, I've never heard anybody say this before, I've been kind of throwing around to make sure I'm not smoking something, but folks are still able to actually drop a cookie on unviewable impressions and be able to tag for attribution, especially on last view, right? So people trying to get something for free and still be able to tag and then bag later, uh, great model. If you can get it, brilliant, fantastic. I do think, though, there is some value there, especially in programmatic buying, especially for retargeters looking to find folks just at the bottom of the funnel, especially those buying a lot of open auction inventory today, that that 300 by 250 or that 728 by 90 way down at the bottom that's never seen, I'm still able to identify that someone was actually on that page, even if they didn't see my ad. So I'm getting that for dirt cheap, and I'm able to retarget them later. That's a pretty good deal for buyers today, I'd argue. So some suggested options for publishers. Uh, you can say no. Uh, again, buyer's market last seven years, pretty tough right now to say no. What we would suggest, though, is that you say uh, not no necessarily, but you know, ask uh, you know, where others have actually been able to get you what you're looking for. You know, it's understandable that a lot of young buyers at particular agencies have been asking for 100% viewability, guaranteed, and you know, we want to run it programmatically. Where is that existing today? Like, we all want to do that, but it just it isn't happening right now. There, there are no reporting standards for it. The, the, the ad tech companies haven't lined up correctly. Um, so, you know, again, we don't suggest just saying no. We suggest probably trying to work through some realistic solutions. You can re redesign your site. Um, when I was uh, uh, running programmatic at the New York Times back in January of this year, we re redesigned our whole site and had a cool uh, way of uh, taking our articles that used to be, you know, you click eight pages to see, uh, eight, eight times to see eight, eight pages of articles and scroll down. It actually became one long scroll, and uh, the actual ad server would paint a 300 by 250 as you're scrolling down our moat numbers were in the high 90s because obviously it's going to be always viewable and always in screen for at least one second, right? So, you know, there, a lot of folks are sort of saying, gee, maybe we should de-NASCAR our, our site a little bit here. Uh, no offense to Dave Murdoch, uh, former king of NASCAR, um, now at Gannett, but uh, you know what I'm talking about, kind of maybe removing some of the extraneous ads out of there that, that aren't being seen. Help push some of the ad tech companies. You heard it earlier today. 
you know, to get lined up around some reporting and some similar methodology. You know, PubMatic's busting their butt, you know, building a lot of great stuff, announcing with, uh, you know, Bob Walzak, their head of product, new analytics and great things. But as you can see, it's, it's early in terms of these exchanges that a lot of buying is taking place. Nobody's got the column uh, set up in the reporting yet that says viewability. You know, AdX is in beta, but it's, it's, it's early days. So, you know, both folks pushing on that front would be great. A shout out to, uh, to Amobi and uh, Cargo, who just in the last 48 hours had announced that there would be some measurement uh, around, at least on the buy side, um, and, uh, and in the mobile ad network around viewability. So it's getting there. There are a couple other options. Certainly, you can move to uh, rich media or high impact ads. So, shout outs to Point Roll, Undertone, uh, ReactX, full disclosure, a client of ours. Um, that can actually certainly maximize your viewability there because it's going to be a little more in the face. Higher CPMs, fantastic, uh, obviously, for branding and even for performance. Um, and then, uh, how many of you have actually sold, uh, been on the publisher side, or actually bought or sold an ad based on time spent? You know what I'm talking about, this guaranteed time view. So you've seen probably 15 articles in the last month about this. Uh, Chartbeat came in through a different direction on the editorial side with publishers, and they're now starting to push selling by time. Web Spectator, full disclosure, is a client of ours. But being able to uh, sell by guaranteed time spent as a much higher CPM, obviously, but 100% viewable. Maybe worth a look for publishers there to be able to give exactly what buyers are looking for. Um, the other question uh, for, for those who are on the, uh, either on the brand side or agency side, um, how does viewability actually look in television? Those who actually are you know, planning budgets, whoops, back, there we go. Um, you know, I'm a TiVo fan, early adopter, we've all got DVRs. You know, what, is, what does that standard look like? It's always kind of funny to, to see. It's so great that digital media can measure so many wonderful things, but let's make sure it's apples to apples comparisons and fair with other media out there. Um, last three uh, takeaways, um, don't hate on the buyers. They're, you know, they're trying, they're mostly just doing their job. They're pushing, they're taking advantage of a good market and they're justifiably saying, look, it makes sense for us to want to actually have the ads that we're buying uh, paid for uh, with, with good CPMs actually seen by, by a human being for at least a second, that's fair. Um, make sure that you remind them, of course, of the, of the cookie dropping and, and that's fine. If you're gonna get those for free, then you, you probably shouldn't be allowed to drop a cookie in the non-viewable ads. Um, ad tech companies, please, we know everybody's got very, very, very busy roadmaps, but this is probably one uh, where we could use some, some alignment on uh, methodology, on reporting standards so that everybody can at least count things and optimize quickly. Um, and then as, as we showed on the last slide around the other media, long term, uh, big upside for digital. Short term, uh, a lot of understandable pain. Um, but we'll get through it. Thanks.